Namo Bhutai, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 36 uh, given by the Buddha and the title of the discourse is The Longer Discourse with Sakkaka. Right? So, MN 35, uh, which is Middle Discourse 35, uh, we discussed there was a shorter discourse with Sakkaka where Sakkaka engaged a with a, uh, in a debate with the Buddha uh, uh, on the topic of non-self and Buddha defeated him in this debate right and uh, so Sakkaka is quite a you know uh, uh, a difficult character as such right he did not uh, even in, in this discourse and in the previous discourse also that he was impressed by the knowledge of the Buddha but he did not seek a refuge in the Buddha after the end, right? So, uh, this is a longer discourse with the Buddha where Sakaka came up to the Buddha and asked him certain questions. So, what basically I am doing is that I am picking up the main main knowledge points, right? Um, in the in the discussion that happened, right? So, this is the discourse. The link to the discourse is given in the description below. So, you can also read the discourse at your end and get your own insights uh, from that discourse. So, basically, Sakaka uh, 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 approached Venerable Ananda saw Sakaka coming and uh, 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 Ananda knew that uh, Ananda told Buddha that Sir Sakaka, the son of Jain parents, is coming. He is a debater and clever speaker. He wants to discredit the Buddha. So Sakaka's intentions were not good. He was not, not like a, someone who wanted to know about the teaching. His He was more into these debating kind of things and discrediting the other, other people and he always kind of used to brag that, you know, uh, in the previous if, uh, MN35 also, if, if we uh, study, he said that, you know, uh, that uh, the per other person, you know, the sweat was pouring out from his armpits and, you know, kind of bragging about his kind of abilities. So he was not a person who was very wanting to learn or understand, right? So and, uh, Ananda told Buddha upfront that this is how Sarka, Sakaka is. Uh, so kind of warned Buddha before. So Sakaka then went up to the Buddha exchange greetings with the Buddha. Now, Sakaka was a Jain, uh, I think he was com coming from the Jain uh, clan. So, they had this system of, you know, a lot of extreme practices and austerities or tapas, right? So, he came up and he asked the Buddha that uh, they have, there are some ascetics and Brahmins who live committed in their practice, developing the physical endurance without developing the mind. They suffer painful physical feelings uh, and this, this happened. Their thighs became paralyzed, their heart burst, Hot blood gushed from their mouth. They went mad and lost their mind. Uh, why is that? Because their mind was not developed. right? So, Sakaka himself knew that the mind has to be developed. Otherwise, you know, extreme forms of physical austerities or physical kind of a, uh, a pressure given on your body can cause the mind to, you know, explode. So, Buddha asked him that, have you heard about the development of physical uh, endurance. So Sakaka said that yes, there are. He gave the examples of certain ascetics, and uh, they go naked, ignoring conventions. They lick their hands. Uh, they do not eat, right? They in, do not eat for days and all. Then uh, Buddha asked him, "How do they get by eating so little?" So they said that no, when possible, if you know luxury, fresh and cooked foods are available, then they eat in one lot, lot of such foods. So Buddha said, "This is all wrong." Right? Uh, this is all wrong. And then Buddha asked, have you heard about development of mind? So basically Buddha said, the, even you don't understand the concept of physical endurance. Right? So, so how will you understand the concept of mental endurance? Right? So Buddha said, have you, have you heard about the development of the mind? When Sakaka was questioned by the Buddha about development of the mind, he was stumped. That means, see, one thing that I could read from the Sutta Central's uh, a commentary, uh, the notes to the particular this uh, discourse is that before Buddha, there were no kind of uh, they, they they talked about contemplation and everything, but there was there was no kind of genuine practices for development of the mind. So if you see the noble eightfold path of the Buddha, there are three paths which are dedicated to the develop. One of the pillars of the noble eightfold path, you know, one of the three pillars is development of mind, mind training and the three parts are right effort, making the right effort, uh, right mindfulness and right concentration. They are all towards the development of mind because Buddha said that without development of the mind as a faculty, you will not be able to get the wisdom. 
right? The wisdom, the, the, the insight about, you know, the nature of this reality, about the impermanent nature of reality, you will not be able to get if your mind is not one-pointed. So here, since Sakaka was not aware of any such practices, he, he was like totally stumped. So, so then Buddha said that what you are saying about physical endurance and austerities is actually not a part of the physical endurance. So, so in the noble words, that, that means Buddha said that in our teaching, these kind of practices, you know, not eating for long, long days and then eating in one shot, they are not part of the noble one's training. And since you don't understand development of physical endurance, how can you possibly understand the development of the mind? So this was like Buddha in a sort, you know, showing Sakaka where he was, right? So Sakaka was like, mostly was bragging and claiming to be all-knowing, but Buddha showed him his true, you know, level that this is how, where you are, right? So yes, Sakaka said, then Buddha said that, um, um, what is, the, how is someone uh, uh, undeveloped in physical endurance? So Buddha said that, uh, the person who is undeveloped in physical endurance in mind is a person that when who pleasant feeling comes, they become full of lust and craving for that pleasant feeling. And then the pleasant feeling ceases. And and when painful feeling arises, they they suffer, they sorrow and wail and lament, beating their breast and falling into confusion. Right? And because their mind is un, undeveloped, painful feelings occupy the mind. Anyone whose mind is occupied by both pleasant and painful feelings like this is undeveloped. This is also uh, coming out in the Buddha's teaching in the Dhammapan that uh, about this uh, example that Buddha gave about a, um, a mind as a hut. So Buddha said a well-developed well-developed mind is like a well-thatched hut. Uh, ill-developed mind is like a ill-thatched hut. Right? That where the like a rainwater enters, in case of a rainwater enters the hut, similarly passion flows into that mind. But a well-developed mind is like a, a well-developed hut where passion cannot enter. So basically Buddha's, Buddha is trying to convey is a learned noble disciple when the, they experience the pleasant feeling they don't become full of lust and then the pleasant feeling ceases. And when they suffer painful feelings, they do not so. So friends, this is our practice when we of our vipassana, of inside meditation that we practice and our medit mindfulness practice on a day-to-day -day basis. That, you know, what we do is that we are mindful of the various feelings coming in our ourselves. If we are not mindful, then, then these feelings, you know, cause craving or cause aversion. And, you know, this whole cycle keeps on going, right? We, we create more and more sankhara. Whereas, if we are mindful, we are like stopping the flow. This whole dependent origination wheel, we are stopping the flow of that wheel just by being mindful at whatever the feelings are arising and watching them with equanimity. That feeling is basically just a kind of a charge, electrical charge. You can say, in normal words, we can say. So, we, the, through mindfulness, what we are doing is that that electrical charge is dissipated. So, we do not kind of give further energy or further direction to that charge, right? Uh, we just, every desire or every clinging or every aversion is like giving further volitional energy to that particular feeling that has arisen. This is like, see, what was this my little understanding? So, when we are mindful, we are like stopping the entire thing on its, on its tracks, right? And uh, this is like we are undoing the you know the the you know hundreds of hundreds and thousands of years of our evolution right how we have evolved from all these kind of patterns and that's why you know some patterns like anger or lust or you know uh, revenge all these patterns are so deep deeply ingrained that it is very difficult at times to be mindful when those kind of you know the storm comes right so this is our practice that when any type of feeling arises pleasant or unpleasant or neutral we are mindful of that. Oh, this is pleasant. So this is what Mahasi is practice. I follow Mahasi Sayadaw's tradition of inside meditation. So we just keep noting, okay, pleasant feeling, pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, neutral feeling, neutral feeling. We just keep noting in our mind that this is, so we are like our guard is up. If our guard is down, 
then a pleasure you see a beautiful woman and the feelings of lust arise in you and you know or if you see anything very good on the plate uh, uh, like in india we have gulab jamun or rasgulla you know or any sweet dish you just instead of one or two you maybe eat three or four only right so that the thing is that we have to keep our guard up at all times okay then buddha is talking here about uh, uh, his 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 um, in his early life his teachings with his uh, learnings under alara kalama and udakka this is already covered in an earlier discourse in much detail so i am not talking here about that right you can check that buddha's noble quest my video on the titled buddha's noble quest you can check that and you will find that discourse where it is covered in detail then now buddha is giving an analogy of uh, uh, the very fact that you know kind of a sappy log which is lying in water so buddha here is basically saying is that if you if you want to uh, uh, withdraw so uh, let me just read the basically the question so buddha is basically giving the analogy of a oh, basically a, a, a green sappy log which is lying in the water and uh, in the same so buddha says that if you find a green sappy log and it's lying in the water uh, uh will you will a person will be able to light a fire in the same way ascetics and brahmans who don't live withdrawn in the body and mind from sensual pleasures they don't inter, they haven't internally give up given up or still the desire affection infatuation passion or sensual pleasures regardless of whether or not they feel painful sharp severe acute feelings due to over exertion they are incapable of knowledge so buddha is basically trying to say is that you have to do both things one is that withdrawn in body and mind in, from sensual pleasures uh, out on an outside level and also internally you should have been given the given up the kind of desire or affection now for lay people withdrawing um, uh, on an outside level by going from what i understand from it is kind of going into lay from lay life to homelessness which is like the ideal path for anyone who is seeking enlightenment so that is not possible but we can definitely still in our uh, as a lay people we can ensure that when we are in our daily life moving within sense pleasures so we are surrounded by sense pleasures but we have to keep our guard up keep ourselves withdrawn internally at least internally we can do right externally we cannot do because of our limitations but definitely internally we have to keep our guard so everything comes back to being mindful on a daily basis then buddha is talking about certain approaches that buddha took in his uh, uh, like uh, in, during his journey of self realization that when the difficult thoughts came negative thoughts came so he he said he occurred, then it occurred to me why don't i with the teeth clenched and to- tongue pressed against the roof of my mouth squeeze squ- squash and scorch the mind with the mind right it was like a strong man grabs a weaker man this is again coming in another discourse where uh it's basically five ways how to uh, stop negative thoughts where this is the like the last approach that buddha said that if nothing is happening then use the power of your mind to crush the thought out of your mind so do not entertain the thought do not dwell on that thought take the th- thought out, out of your mind so important is that you know what what i can you know uh, kind of reflect on this is that may mean important thing is that we have to watch our thoughts because our th- if our thoughts are kind of of blame of ill will these are the thoughts no what are the thoughts of ill will sensual thoughts of restlessness of worry hatred right this five spiritual hindrances then automatically our speech will also be like that so even at a th- at the thought level itself we have to try to not entertain those kind of thoughts so you can also see that video where buddha has stated five approaches to stop five ways to stop negative thoughts that video also you can see okay then coming to yeah so then buddha tried also everything buddha also tried all the 
kind of ascetic practices you know the what the jains used to do lot of extreme penance to the body and everything so buddha said that you know he realized that this is this is not going to do this is useless and then he he asked himself could there be another path to awakening right and then and then he 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 finally found his way right it's a long kind of a discourse 10 page discourse i am just taking out the main main points then uh, sakka asked that you know uh, how do you sleep during the day so buddha said that i spread out my outer robe folded in four laid down in the lion's posture on the right side so this is basically buddha's how buddha slept you know lion's pose uh, if you see some of the buddha's uh, uh, pictures images the buddha is lying down you know like this like with his legs spread so buddha said on the right side placing one foot on top of the other mindful and aware so this actually shows that even during sleep buddha was you know mindful and aware now this is buddha not us right so we we cannot be mindful in sleep in our sleep mindful and aware but what we can actually do friends is that when we go to sleep in the night we can like it takes 5 10 15 minutes for us to like go to the sleep we can be totally mindful and aware on on how our eyes slowly 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 they they, they shut down our body processes are slowly slowly you know relaxing everything we can try uh, uh, how, and be mindful of that that also can be our practice right okay then sakaka asked so sakaka had a lot of questions right uh, so sakaka asked that how do you define someone who is deluded so buddha said that uh, uh buddha said anyone who has not given up the defilements that are corrupting leading to future lives hurtful resulting in suffering and future birth old age and death is deluded that means buddha is saying any anyone who is not ended the defilements that are corrupting leading to future lives rebirth hurtful leading to old age that means this cycle of rebirth is deluded that means till the time a person is not fully whose kind of defilements have not been ended fully he is continuing to be deluded for not giving up the defilements that makes you deluded anyone who has given up the defilements that are corrupting is not deluded right and then buddha says that the realized one that means he says for himself has given up the defilements he has cut them off at the root made them like a palm stump obliterated them so that they are unable to rise in the future right because it's like said that when you once you attain nibbana right uh, enlightenment then there is no more it's like the defilements have ended they, they, they will not arise again then last buddha uh, sakaka praises mata master gautama that it is incredible you know that whenever i have attacked you with inappropriate in, in intrusive criticism the complexion of the screen your skin brightens and the color of the face becomes clear it, now he says that i recall talking to purana kasapa and others and uh, and by you know he dodged the issue distracting the discussion with irrelevant points and displaying you know uh, annoyance hate but when master gautama is repeatedly attacked with inappropriate intrusive criticism the complexion of his skin brightens and the color of the face becomes clear just like a perfected one a fully awakened buddha right so then he said master gautama i must go i have many duties and much to do so buddha said okay please go at your convenience right so uh, at the end he should he he, he didn't have even a kind of a courtesy to at least thank buddha for his time and, and everything but i think buddha buddha did not mind right so uh, so right so this was uh, this was this discourse by with sakaka and uh, this is some knowledge points that i could gain from this discourse um, every discourse that i read helps me also and i hope it helps you also reading this discourse purifies us and uh, you know somewhere or the other you know some neurons they they connect things when we read various discourses one by one so try reading one discourse a day and do share your insights from this discourse in the comment section uh, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo